Hey folks, sorry I haven't been able to make any content lately, but uh, the tornadoes uh, the week of Christmas and the week of New Year's have kept me very busy my day job for the past month, so I haven't been able to squeeze anything out. But I did want to show you what a bonehead I am on a project I did manage to do. Now I've already got it fixed, but I want to show you the stupid way I went about it. First, I got an Atari 600. Believe it or not, at my age, this is the first time I've ever had an Atari anything. So I got it. I was pretty pleased. And the seller didn't say whether or not it worked, but I knew if there was anything wrong, I'd have a, a fairly good chance of being able to fix it. So I got it. And at least the case is in good condition. It could use a, a whitening, of course. But uh, I plugged it in, and I could tell I had a video picture but it was badly twisted like horizontal was was out of whack so of course first i tested the monitor that i had it attached to it wasn't that next thing i went and looked at was the video modulator circuit usually on these guys they were pretty primitive anytime you hooked a computer up to a tv the picture was pretty crappy so you know i was thinking maybe uh some of the coils were out of tune or a couple of capacitors in the circuit had gone bad i've seen it happen before but i checked it and checked it and i couldn't find anything wrong with it so i started going down a rabbit hole now there's probably some people out there right now going hey mcfly hey did you happen to check no i did not i didn't have enough coffee okay that's that's that that's going to be my favorite excuse. I never have enough coffee. There's one thing you should check always, and we'll get to that. But this is what I did. Now I've already got it separated, so for ease of the video, I opened it up. I took a look at the video modulator circuit, which is up here. There was nothing wrong with it well, that I could find. So just in case. I took maybe an hour or so and built a bypass circuit so I could get direct video from the board, bypass the video modulator, and have component output. And I thought, that, that's got to be it. No. Plugged it in, same thing. So I started going backwards from there. Are you, are you, hearing, are you hearing the red siren going off? because I did not. I went backwards from the video modulator circuit. I went to this. Now this is a uh, this is a hex buffer. This has input lines coming in from the board and the output goes to the video modulator. So I thought, well, this is the thing just before that. I'll check that out. I could see that it had signals on the inputs. I could see that it had signals on the outputs. I wasn't sure whether those signals were correct but they were there so that means and i checked the uh, output of the uh, crystal oscillator and that was working fine at the right frequency so i was just about to actually order a replacement because i don't have one of those and i thought well let me check the voltage on the ground and the b positive because this board even though this plug has all these pins it only used two of them. This board uses five volts positive, and that's all it uses. I checked the pins, and the voltage was 4.2. Well, that ain't enough. 4.7 would probably be the minimum to keep this board working properly. At 4.2, it was working, but it wasn't working right. So that was stupid. I ignored the first commandment of any circuit repair. Does the device have the voltage that it needs to function? So I hook it up to my bench power supply, set it for 5 volts, hook it up to a monitor, turn it on, Oh look, it works. 
There was nothing wrong with the computer at all. The power supply. And the power supply for these things, that particular one that I got, is notorious for being bad. And I'll show you too. Now it's heavily potted. The whole thing is, is nothing but a, a brick. So I basically beat it to death with a hammer. There's the transformer. Let's look at that capacitor inside there. Now that wasn't me from the hammer. It looked like that inside. Gee, do you think that might have something to do with it? Bitch, it does. That's why these things were known for being bad. Now all I need on here is 5 volts. Notice it's only pulling 0.7 amps right now. If it was really busy, it might get close to 1 amp. I'll get a nice uh, wall wart about... Mm, one and a half amps output to make sure it can handle this thing if it has a, a, a need for power. And that's it, that's, that's all it'll need. Sometimes you just don't go down the right rabbit hole. It's best if you don't go down one at all. But, uh, well, at least I got a working Atari now. So, well, hopefully you guys had a good holiday and uh, I'll see you soon. I've got uh, something else in the mix real quick. Catch you later.